Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm going to be taking more of your questions in another segment of Ask Judy. This question is from Angry SOB. Sorry you're angry. I hope my show makes you less angry. <laughs> Anyway, uh, who asked, I would imagine computer technology and mobile devices have revolutionized TV movie scripts. Changes can be made and distributed instantaneously now. Very true. Yeah, usually you'll get, uh, you might get emailed the script instead of um, it being hand delivered, uh, driven to your door to be delivered. Uh, it's still, oftentimes you, you still do get an actual physical copy of the, of the script so you can make notes in it. Um, then I wouldn't be surprised if everyone walks around on set with an iPad in their hand. Um, I don't know about that. Um, usually uh, when you get on set, there are little pages. They're, you know, like five by seven. Um, and it's called the, um, uh, the sides. And... So you will have those for the day and it'll, it will be um, a miniature version of all the scenes that are being filmed that day. So in the sequence, they're going to be filmed. So you have that for reference um, to review your lines or know what's coming next or the, you know, the crew has it. So they know what's happening, what props need to be brought in, what equipment they need to have on standby and stuff like that. So we would be given those. Um, every morning or every day when you arrive for work, you'd get those. We didn't have that um, at the time of the Waltons, but those are pretty typical. Now, other people, if they have their whole script on their iPad or computer, they might walk around with it. It might be on their phone. You know, I um, tended to like the the physical copies, but they're so small, the type that sometimes, <laughs> you know, now it's like, uh, I can't read that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have my magnifying glass with that. You also said in other news, commercials are ruining television. Yeah, I know. There's so many, especially in reruns, uh, where a lot of an original uh, show will have to be cut down to add extra commercials. I hear that a lot from all of you about watching reruns of The Waltons and how much ends up getting cut out. If a show was originally scheduled to be a certain amount of time in its first run, then the commercials will fit into those slots so you won't be losing programming time, but certainly reruns, it's like all bets are off. But things are getting more and more expensive, so I guess they need they need those extra advertising dollars to pay for the show. So it is, uh, you know, a trade-off. And I think that's why a lot of people are going and willing to pay premiums, you know, for to subscribe to different uh, streaming channels because you can watch things without commercials and you have are basically paying that extra fee every month to avoid paying for commercials. So it's, it's that trade-off. But you can also you know, with the Waltons or other series that you love, you can, you know, if, if it's possible for you, buy the DVD sets, things like that, buy the seasons, and then you can watch them at your leisure with no commercials. And I know the entire box set of the Waltons is available. This is not a pitch. I get nothing for people buying this other than maybe, uh, maybe two cents for a royalty, <laughs> but it's pretty minimal. So Honestly, that's not why I'm pitching, but you can, um, which is what I did, because I was never given DVDs of the show. So if I have copies for what I need, even here to do my channel, I I bought a box set, which included all nine seasons, plus um, an additional one that has all of the reunion TV movies, plus a decade of the Waltons, which was another special that was done at, 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 right at the end, I think, of season eight. Um so, you know, if, if you have a Christmas wish list and somebody that wants to know what you want, perhaps you can put that in your Christmas wish list. I have a question here from J-R-I-J-R. Judy, could you share about any talk show experiences you have had? How do you get to appear on a show? Are you given questions ahead of time? Any special memories or experiences you recall? Um, I've done a number of talk shows over the years, some more prominent than others. Um, I haven't done any of the like big nighttime ones, you know, like in our day, Johnny Carson or things like that. Did a lot of afternoon ones like uh, Mike Douglas, Merv Griffin, Dinah Shore um, and some of the morning ones, you know, the Today Show. Or... And then in a lot of other cities, I've traveled a lot doing PR and, and interviews and stuff. Uh, so those can come from a number of different uh, avenues. When we were doing the series, uh, they would often come through 
the CBS press department. Uh, I know I was sent out on some press junkets at times to do press with um, the local affiliates for CBS uh, because that was a way for them to help promote the show. And then uh, later on, I had uh, a press agent um, and my publicist that my, would uh, get calls or would also you know, promote me to different shows as a potential guest. So, and that was also how I ended up doing a lot of game shows and uh, competition shows like Battle of the Network Stars or Circus of the Stars, those types of things. They would know when things were happening and they would promote their various different clients who were interested and willing to do those things. And, um, you know, because they were interacting on behalf of a number of clients, you know, they would have an opportunity to, to pitch you. Uh, you know, they represented a lot of other actors who were on TV shows at that time. Uh, so that's kind of how they came about. And depending on the show, sometimes there would be a pre-interview where I would talk with um, the sort of talent coordinator for the show uh, who would ask me different questions and just do sort of a pre-interview to determine, because the segments tend to be really short. Um, so you might have three to 10 minutes max, you know, or sometimes you did your segment, but then you stayed while some other people were interviewed. But typically at those points, you tended to just be a guest and not necessarily get engaged all that much with somebody else's interview time. Um, I also co-hosted one show for a week in the afternoon. We, I think uh, we shot, might have shot multiple segments, but in one day, but I don't remember. I wasn't so good at that at that time. Um, I think I would be much better at it now because I've had all this experience on my channel here in um, interviewing people and knowing um, what sorts of um, questions I'd be interested in asking. So at that point, I didn't do a lot of real research on the people. Um, and I sort of let the host of the show predominantly roll with it. Uh, so uh, if I don't, if something doesn't include a pre-interview, then I usually, usually you go on because you're promoting something. So of course, if I was promoting the Waltons, then we talk about the Waltons and I would just at, answer whatever questions they had. Or if it was important to, because it was a specific thing that I had done that I wanted to promote, then the show would know that because my publicist would have sent them information in my bio and sort of a press release about what it was I was promoting. Uh, so it was pretty easy to do. Uh, we very soon became rather seasoned professionals at doing interviews. You know, so sometimes they'd catch you off guard with some question or sometimes they'd ask you to participate in something that was you know, a little awkward or whatever, <laughs> but um, mostly, uh, they were pretty straight ahead. I, I don't remember any real standout uh, moments or or questions. Um, so uh, I don't I don't have any great talk show stories. I, I remember when we were doing John Walmsley and I went out and did um, a press junket for CBS uh, for the Waltons one season. I just remember we were doing a lot of promos for the show where. You know, it might be like, hi, I'm Judy Norton, or, you know, I play Mary Ellen, and this is John Walmsley, and he plays Jason, and we, and, you know, we're at, please watch the Waltons on CBS at 8 p.m. on, and whatever their local channel was. So doing those types of things. And there was one time where there was just some very bizarre sort of copy, copy being what, what it was they wanted us to read. So they'd give us stuff to read, and they were pretty short, so we could kind of memorize it. But one of them just some of these stuck with me because they were so strange. Like one of them was something like, did you ever wonder if when a Walton leaves Walton's mountain, they wither up and die? Well, we're all alive and well on, you know, CBS at blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it was just like, what? <laughs> I was just like, that one struck me as, as probably more peculiar than most of them. So that's probably my, my oddest talk show story. That's what I have for you for this segment of Ask Judy. If you're enjoying these, please do hit like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time for more behind the scenes of The Waltons. Thanks for watching.